All right, so let's take our recorded macros to the next level by modifying them and making them more dynamic. So in a previous video, we went through recording our macros. Now let's get back to one of those macros. Now, before I do that, let me actually get rid of all this other worksheets that I already have. Just create a couple of clean data tabs and then we'll get started right away. All right, so let's go to our Visual Basic Editor. This is the code we recorded last time, which was basically a combination of a few different recordings. So the problem with this particular recording is that when we run this macro for a data set that's longer or shorter, what's going to happen, it's just gonna repeat what it does every single time. But we want this to be more dynamic, so we want it to work for variable number of rows. So let's take a look at this code that was generated. So this selects the headers on top, so basically from A1 through F1. Here we take that selection, we change the font and the background, that's fine. We take the column F, we do number formatting. Now right here we select the range from A2 through A22. Now the problem with this is that 22 is the 22nd row and we need this to be more dynamic, so we need that to be the last row. And we're gonna find things like this again as we keep going through this macro. See, there is another one from F2 through F22 and there's probably gonna be more. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that this last row is replaced with the actual last row in our data. So we'll get started by simply going to the top of this macro and before anything is done, let's just try to figure out what's the last row in our data. And if you did watch my videos in previous parts, you probably already know how to do that very well. So we're gonna find the last row. So I'm gonna use the find method in this case to find the last row. Obviously just use whichever method works best with your data. I'm going to create a variable called LR, which will be my last row. Basically just do cells find method. And we're gonna search for the star and the starting cell will be the first A1 cell, which is cells 1-1. One, one. Looking will do XL for new less. Look at, it will be XL part. And search order, XL by rows. And XL previous will be where we're gonna go from. And finally, the match case would be false. If you're looking at this code, you have no idea what I'm doing here. You should go back and watch previous parts if you want to understand what this code actually does. But what this is gonna do, it's gonna find the last row in our data and that should be the LR. And again, I forgot to do the dot row here, which will get us the row number. So now that I have the last row, I'm gonna just scroll down and find the part where we're selecting the range from, for example, from A2 through A22. And instead of having this hard-coded 22 as the last row, I'm gonna remove the 22 and go outside of that string and concatenate that LR variable. And now that should be dynamically getting the last row for us. Similarly, for this one, I'm gonna again remove this and do LR. And basically what we need to do, we have to go through this code and find all the instances of our hard-coded last row and replace it with our new way of getting the last row. So one way to do this is to just keep scrolling down until we find all of them. But if you have a large piece of code, this could be challenging. So one thing you can do, now 22 was the last row. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do find and try to replace it. So I'm gonna do this 22 and then quote, and I'm gonna go under edit, replace, and here under find what, see it's already that 22 quotation, which is our currently hard-coded last row. And I'm gonna replace it with, if you think about this 22, this part, what I'm doing here 
Actually, this is the part. I need to close the parentheses instead. Actually, not parentheses, but quotation. So that's the quotation, similar to here. And then a space, and then ampersand, and then LR. So what I could do now, I could just go to the top of my code and click find next and see it finds the next occurrence. And I'm just gonna click replace and then see it searches for the next occurrence. So there it is again, range autofill, which drags the formula down again, instead of that 22, we're gonna replace that with this. Now I could just click replace all but just to make sure I'm not accidentally replacing something that should not be replaced, I'm just gonna go one by one. So I'm gonna click replace on that one. And this also needs to be replaced. See, it selects the last cell. So I'll replace that too. This, fine, we'll replace it. And it seems like that's all. So we basically went through this code, found all 22 hard-coded, which was our hard-coded last row for our data and replace it with LR. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna X out of this and also we don't need this. Go back to Excel software and try to run this. First of all, let's run this on this one that has 22 rows to make sure it works the way it's supposed to work. So I'm gonna go here, click run. That looks good. Now let's go to another tab here, delete some rows. Now we have less rows. I'm gonna go back to macros, click run. Good. Let's move to another one. Let's add some data this time. So I'm just gonna copy paste a little bit here. Now I have 29 rows here. I'm gonna run the same macro. And as you can see, it works very well. Now to make our macros usually run a little faster, what we can also do instead of, actually, let me show you something. If I go to this tab and I run the macro, as I run it, we can see in the background the steps that are happening. It happens really fast, but we can see those steps. Now, when you have a lot more data or you have more complicated steps in your macro, this process can get a lot slower. So one way to speed it up is to make sure that the screen doesn't update every time something happens. So what we could do, we could just turn off all the updates on a screen, have the macro do what it's supposed to do, and then turn on all the updates back. Now to make this happen, I'm gonna go back to my visual basic editor. I'm gonna scroll to the top of this subroutine and right before all of this, I'm gonna add a line of code to turn off all the screen updates. And we do it by doing application dot screen updating and make it false. Now, because we turn it off, then screen updating is gonna be turned off. So we want to turn it back on at some point, which is gonna be by the end of this macro. So I'm gonna scroll down and put this in here. And instead of false, we're gonna do true. I'm gonna go back, let's run this macro again. So see how we couldn't see all those animations anymore. So it just ran the whole thing and then we're done. Now, one more thing we can do to make this a little nicer, especially when you have a longer piece, have some message pop up that everything is done. So our macro user knows it was completed. Now, before I do that again, let me just make a couple of more copies of this. I'm gonna go back to my Visual Basic Editor. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'll go after screen updating. And the reason I need to do this after is because if I put the message box before I turn on the screen updating, it's just not gonna show it because my screen updating is still gonna be off. We need to make sure we turn on the screen updates and then show the message box. So I'm gonna do MSG box. And then the next part is the prompt basically the text that our user is going to see. So all done. Now there are other options here, but for now, let's just keep it at this. If I go back, go to this or this one, doesn't matter, run this macro. See, we get all done and on top, it says Microsoft Excel. So I'm gonna go back and here, if we hit comma, 
See, the next argument is what buttons we're gonna get in that pop-up and the type of message box we're gonna get, basically. So we're gonna do VB OK only, which will basically just give us an OK option. And then if I do another comma, see, now we can also do a title. And here in quotes, I'm gonna say, hello. Let's run this again. And now you can see on top here, we get hello instead of getting Microsoft Excel. So now we can customize this message on top and this all done message as well. Hit okay, looks good. So the last thing we may want to do to again, make this macro run possibly faster is to not only turn off the animation updates, but also turn off formula calculations while the macro is running. Similar to when you go to formulas and do calculation options. So in the beginning, we can switch it to manual so it doesn't recalculate everything. And then at some point, we can switch it back to automatic and that will just bring us back to normal. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go back to Visual Basic again, all the way on top. We're gonna do application dot calculation and see now we have our options so there's the automatic manual and semi-automatic so automatic is our default the one we have right now so we're going to switch it back to manual so it doesn't recalculate everything every single time and then i'm going to go back in the end and turn our calculations on so calculation and we'll turn it back to automatic and this should run exactly the same way. So if I go back and try it on this, it's just going to be faster. So finally, I'm going to delete all of this again. Just add a couple of more. So I want to add another thing to this macro to make sure that the macro doesn't run if there's no data. So if we had a case when there are no rows like this, we don't want to run our macro. So if we have something like this, or we have something like this, our last row is gonna end up being basically the one on top. So we can do a conditional check and make sure that our last row is two or higher. And that way we can know we can actually run the macro. So what we'll do, we'll go here on top, right after this last row, we're gonna do an if statement. So it's a conditional check. So we're gonna do if that LR, which is that variable, is less than two, then, and I'm gonna do and if. So when you open an if statement, you have to close it. And sub. So what and sub does, it basically stops the execution of this subroutine. What we could possibly do before we end the sub, we could also give some sort of message box to tell the user that you can't run this macro when there's no data. So what I want to do, however, before I give the message box and terminate the rest of this macro, I wanna make sure I turn these two back to you know their regular state. So I'll just copy and paste these to this if statement. And after that, we'll do a message box. Please make sure you have data before you run this macro. So now if I go back and run this macro, Okay, so this should not be end sub, this should be exit sub. End sub would just close this subroutine, we want to exit that subroutine. I'm gonna go back and run this. Runs just fine, we're all done. Now let's try to run this when we have, let's say, this much data. No problem. Let's try to run this when it's like this. See, we got our error message, exits the rest of the macro, so it's not gonna do anything. And also if we have a blank workbook, 
So that gives us an error. So I'm going to end this. What we can do to avoid this thing, we can just turn off the errors when we get to this line and then we can turn them back on. So what I'm going to do on top here, I'm going to say on error, resume next, and that will basically just ignore errors. Now, right after this last row, we're going to turn that back on. So I'm going to say on error, go to zero. And this turns errors back on. So right now, if we run this, see, we get our error because what's happening, this line gives us an error. So last row doesn't get set. So we don't have a value for it. And that value basically evaluates less than our number, whatever number we choose. So that again, we get inside of this if statement. So now we have a couple of error handlings. So we can go ahead and again, test this on this. That doesn't do anything. Let's go back and test it on this one. That also doesn't do anything. And finally, if we try on some data, it just works fine. And that will be our first step in modifying our macros. We'll get to more advanced modifications in our next videos. But for this one, that should be plenty. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.